We will understand the principles of back AMF and flux linkage in the video and get our basic laws right before we proceed to the three phase motor. We will first look at the fundamental physics principles of Faraday's law and Lorentz law through this setup. We have a closed loop electrical circuit formed by the conductors and a metal rod which can be moved horizontally. We have a magnetic field density B constant in both space and time which is perpendicular to the plane. We define a new term called flux to denote how much magnetic field is enclosed in a particular area. For example, this loop does not enclose all the field lines. But if I increase the area of the loop, it will enclose more field lines. This is exactly what flux describes and is given by flux density into cross-sectional area. In our case, we can write the cross-sectional area as y into x of t. So flux becomes b y x. Now let us apply a force on the metal rod so that the rod moves towards the right. x of t will increase and this will increase the area enclosed by the closed loop. So what we have done is produce a change in the flux. Specifically we increase the flux. According to Faraday's law, if there is a change in flux, it will induce a voltage in the electrical circuit given by E of t equal to minus d lambda by dt. Lambda is the flux linkage. In our case, it is essentially the flux enclosed by the closed loop. The magnitude of EMF is given by d by dt of b y x, which is equal to b y v. The negative sign tells us that the voltage induced is going to counter the change of field. Since we are increasing the flux by increasing the area of the loop, the current direction should be such that it will decrease the flux. If we use our right hand and curl our fingers in the direction of the current in a closed circuit, the thumb will give us the direction of the flux inside the circuit. In order to decrease the flux, we need to produce current in counterclockwise direction. What we have actually created is a linear generator as we are moving the rod linearly which is inducing a current and generating electricity. From this, we should remember one important property. The magnitude of the EMF is directly proportional to conductor speed. Let us focus on Lorentz law to complete our understanding. What it says is, if I have a charge Q moving at a velocity V and if I place it in an electromagnetic field, then this charge will experience a force given by F equal to Q into E plus V cross V. In motors, we do not have external electric field present, we only have the magnetic field. So the equation becomes F equal to Q into V cross B. If V and B are perpendicular, the vector cross product reduces to a scalar product F equal to Q V B. Now the current flowing in the conductor can also be thought as the charge is moving in it. Since the length of the conductor is L, the velocity of the charges can be written as distance upon time. On substituting V as L by T, we get F equal to Q L by T into B. Rearranging this equation and substituting Q by T as the current, we get the well-known BLI law. It is important to observe that the force is directly proportional to current. But how are these electrical and mechanical quantities related to each other? We can use conservation of energy. The mechanical work input must equal the electrical energy dissipated in the resistor. F into V equal to G into I. Having understood Lorentz law, we can now design our basic version of linear motor. We will use a voltage source to drive the current in the circuit and the resistor represents the resistor of the conductors. Since the current is now flowing in the metal rod, it will develop a force which will move the rod. We can use the Fleming's left hand rule to find the direction of the force. For this case, the force will act in the right side direction. But as we saw earlier, the moving rod will induce a voltage in the circuit given by the Faraday's law. So the equivalent circuit becomes this. The induced voltage is also referred to as the back EMF induced in the windings. I would suggest you to derive the equations for current, force and velocity for this setup. In case of any doubts, feel free to comment. In this video, we saw how to make a linear motor and we will remember two important conclusions. The force developed is proportional to the current and the voltage induced is proportional to the velocity. We will continue building upon these concepts in the coming videos.